The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Well, a pleasant good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, February 8th, 2024. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Otis, the boss, Wiley. J.U. Choo Choo Kukrick is backstage. He'll be here in a moment. Don't worry. And he's wearing a nice, some, the nice digs for everyone, too. But if this is your first time, we want to welcome you to the show. If this is not your first time, we absolutely thank you for all of your loyalty and your long time listening of our show. We're around 140, almost 150 here, episodes and counting. Uh, but listen, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and join us in the chat where the party's at. Everybody's there having a good time already. It's primed and ready to roll. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media handles at This is Sparta. MSU and let us know where you watching us from. Otis, man, big day yesterday, which was the traditional national signing day, uh, which you know where Michigan State signed a lot, the bulk, the bulk of their class in the December early signing period, but did sign two high level recruits, uh, some unheralded guys, but guys that Michigan State the coaching staff is very happy about and three-star wide receiver Jalen Brown and linebacker defensive lineman Mike Shin Beeler out of the Chicago area. Yeah, one well, kudos to you uh, for uh, enunciating that name for sure. Because when we first announced that, I was like, I'm not going to butcher that first name. But uh, Mr. Beeler, uh, out of obviously Simeon, Chicago Simeon, <laughs> coming, coming from uh, the state of Illinois. But uh, I think Jalen Brown is a guy who, um, like you said, is underrated. Yeah, uh, he has the 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 specs of a you know of a good great receiver that I think fits um, you know Coach Hawk Hawkins uh, you know wishes you know from what he wants in, he wants in a receiver. If you look at this guy, he's going to be able to come in, and you never know from a development standpoint. You know, out of Nacogdoches, Texas. I mean, you, you're looking at a guy who good job. Is just a, a, <laughs> oh yeah, you know when you when you when you're born and raised, you always drive past that uh, right when you get on the border, like you know you're in Texas, right? <laughs> you yeah. born in Texas, uh, and so just from a guy who um, I think can really complement what we have, um, you know, he's looks like he's like a six three six four guy who a receiver. I don't know, am I, am I is that correct from a height wise? So you're looking at yeah. Nick Marsh where. You know, I saw Nick Marsh uh, at the basketball game. I forgot what what game that was a week and a half ago, two weeks. But, I mean, he's legit a 6'4 receiver from Nick Marsh, too. Like, when you look at how, you know, just shoulders, like, from a height-wise, he these guys got height. They also have speed and physical. So, uh, this is a good get to, to complement that wide receiver crew room. Um, and then the preferred walk-ons, like, you always need strong – prefer walk-ons um you know at first you know we have to do the tryouts but these guys could easily probably went somewhere else to get a scholarship or play uh you know at another school mid-major but their skill set you know they're betting on their their skills and saying hey I, I know i can come in and try to give it a work and potentially earn a scholarship or contribute to the team and so uh this is a good get from from uh michigan state signing these two guys and we already have that big class that happened in december early signing day um, and so this completes the crew of this class where Coach Coach Smith got to, got busy, got straight to business, and was able to to do this in the midst of being hired at the end of the football season. Like this is a, a unbelievable job. Uh, I think this is a credit to him and his staff, and the future is bright for our Spartan Nation. Without question, I mean, you know, looking at 
how he's been able to find some of these so-called diamonds in the rough in this class, guys that they had previous relationships with. We're going to ask him about all these uh, players in the upcoming interview because he is coming on. Head coach John Smith will be joining us in a moment. But looking at guys like Mike Shin Beeler out of uh, the Chicago area, you know, this is a guy who had offers at Oregon, you know, and uh, Coach Demetrius Martin was a guy who was recruiting him over there. But now the new defensive uh, coach, secondary coach at Michigan State, you know, continued his recruitment. And then once Rossi, the defensive coordinator, took a look at this kid and on a visit, I mean, it was a no brainer. This is a guy, I mean, everybody says this guy's so twitchy. His film, if he pops off of the film, he's a guy who had six sacks in a game. And I'm, I'm telling you, look, six sacks in a game is hard against air. I mean, against no one, let alone. Uh, you know, in a real game atmosphere. And, you know, a lot of those Illinois players are underrated for whatever reason, uh, but they, I I can think of a lot of them that have been pretty good. Jaden uh, Reed is one of them. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the brothers uh, over there, uh, all the, the offensive linemen, my guys, the centers, Brian Allen, uh, uh, Jack, Allen, Jack yeah. Allen and yeah. Mike Allen, Matt, Matt Allen, all three Allen brothers. I don't know how that escaped my mind like that. I'm getting older, but that's OK. Look, there are some tough players in Illinois, and, and I'm glad to have some another one in this one right here. And Mike Shin Beeler is going to be that kind of guy uh, that we can look forward to cheering for for the next three or four years here at Michigan State. Otis. Looking at the the schedule coming up for the 2024 season, and you knew we had the 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 hiccup there with Louisiana canceling. Everybody's wondering who's going to be that next, who's going to come in and take their place. Well, it looks like we got it. Prairie View A and M is now added to the list to round out the 2024 football schedule. And uh, how about that? This looks like a very favorable schedule for Michigan State. Yeah, we, we you know it's easy for us to say that, right? But clearly, you still got <laughs> tie up your tie up your laces and, and play the game. But um, you know, I think it's very feasible, very t- obtainable to crack that bowl bid, uh, which I think in year one is kind of that that target. But the talent that we have, like, there's no st- if you look at the schedule, like this is a very controllable schedule, like you said, um, for our de- for our fate and for our destination for postseason. Um, I think yeah. it's a good opportunity for Michigan State to fully align with playing in the HBCU um, because of our historical, you know, leadership in, you know, the diversity of Michigan State being leaders in this from a sports standpoint. Uh, it just finds an opportunity to align and really embrace. I, I do hope that we do more in embracing their game culture and just his HBCU's culture in general to come into East Lansing and knowing that there's alums that are based out of, out of the state of Michigan that have, you know, attended Prairie View and A&M. I've had some, some, some friends that have went to Prairie View and A&M. So this could be a good opportunity of like, not a good feel, but more so just an alignment of celebrating um, his history of HBCU. So this is going to be a good opportunity for them to come play in power five uh, and be on the grand stage. Um, But, you know, this is this is one of those things that is great for administration going and finding a replacement at this late in the game. Because, as you know, as we do scheduling, we're years out of scheduling. You know, there's contracts that you got future wise. So when somebody drops out, it's really a kind of a, a hustle and bustle to find someone to to fill that. So uh, congratulations to athletics of aligning mm-hmm. this with HBCU and bringing preview A&M. Um, so we'll see. Week, week three, we'll see. Coming That's up. right. Can't say enough about the job that Alan Haller has been able to do in not only hiring coaches, but being able to put out fires like that uh, in, in a cinch, in a quick moment, like you said, find, trying to find a school to play a Power 5 <laughs> schedule in, with basically less than, what, six, seven months to prepare uh, is not easy. But they got it done, and it's great to have an HBCU coming into East Lansing. It's going to be a great game for all to see. Charitable Gift America. Spartan fans, this is your chance to take control of your NIL contributions and direct them to Spartan athletic programs of your choice. The This is Sparta Fund, powered by Charitable Gift America, allows you to choose which sports you want to support with your NIL donations. All donations to the fund are tax deductible, and all CGA athletes donate 
5% at minimum of their contract to a charitable organization of their choice. Your contribution makes a difference for Spartan teams and also makes a difference in the world. The This is Sparta NIL Fund is the home of Spartan fans looking to impact their teams together. For our senior fans of the age of 70 years young or older, find out how contributions can deliver Spartan Fund points at cgaamerica.org today. Moving on to basketball. Otis, it was a tough night a couple of days ago. Basketball drops a game against Minnesota, 59-56. to Missed free throws and poor decision-making at the guard position attributed to the loss. Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's that kind of toughness that, you know, it was a tough battle against Maryland. And you got to go on the road. And, you know, that road trip is not a uh, an easy one to get to Minneapolis and, and playing, uh, you know, at the barn. Like, this is a venue that is historic for just, you know, a battle. Like, that's a it's a road game. It's a battle. But turnovers, free throws missed. Um, you know, just when we were up, it's just really kind of putting the foot on the gas and really securing uh, that. Uh, we got to give – Look, we got to give credit where credit's due now. Like Cam Christie, like this guy, mm. this guy's a pro. Uh, he is a spitting image, obviously, of Max, clearly like twins, <laughs> but you know, younger Isn't brother. Crazy? And every time he touched the ball, every time he touched the ball, man, it was, you know, he single handedly, you know, defeated us. You know, he's a guy who had full range and green light to just shoot off like on the drive, off the dribble quickly. Um, and then there's just we had the opportunity to really do what we should have done is like close that, close the deal. But um, I think battle tested wise, this is one of those where we, we absolutely, I felt like needed to win um, from a conference standpoint. We were just on that borderline of really taking the next step to getting that seventh win in the big 10. Um, and now we're kind of still in that mid tier of everybody's kind of even. So for us, um, I think is how do we rebound knowing that this weekend uh, Illinois comes to town? Um, mm-hmm. Can we rebound and um, really battle test and, and beat a, a, a right team that we absolutely need one of these big wins? Uh, so Breslin fans, everybody got to come out. This is a really highly attended game, so it's going to be packed on Saturday. But bring your, bring your voices, bring everything you can, because we need Breslin to be rocking to be able to – control the controllables and and defeat the Illini. Well, our question, Illini ranked 10th in the nation right now coming into Breslin Center. It needs to be one of those environments that's intimidating as Breslin typically is. And I don't expect anything less from Spartan Nation in that is zone. Uh, you know, Tyson Walker did lead all scores as we we're talking about the game against Minnesota. Jaden Akins did drop 16, looked really good himself. But, you know, Max Christie, as you said, had 19 himself and uh you know you can tell where the pedigree is i don't know how that one got away from us you got max we got to get the other one too i don't know we will yeah, Cam, you know, yeah. Cam, Cam. Guy, man we should have i mean <laughs> Minnesota? All I do respect. yeah i respect i respect it from a standpoint of like you know i'm gonna blaze my own trail i i respect it you know yes you would love to come in and he'd been a good added bonus to having a a three-point threat with Jaden Akins. If you looked at the future there, um, yeah. but clearly we'll we'll see how this goes uh, as we trend along to the end of the season. But boys will be all right. We'll bounce back as we always do. Spartans always find a way to bounce back after a loss. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Without question, you know, talking about bouncing back, I'll tell you one thing: this tennis team, the men's tennis at Michigan State, is doing some record-breaking performances here. The doubles team. And Michigan State now ranked number one in the nation. I think that's the, the highest ranking of all time in Michigan State history. Uh, we're talking about Max Sheldon, Mr. Junior, and the sophomore Ozan Barris. I mean, these are these guys are killing it right now. Um, you know, the team is ranked 16th overall program a program record right there, and they started eight and zero best start since 2011. And uh, when they opened yeah. up nine and zero, so this is a this is one of those teams, man, that is not getting a lot of press right now. But I mean, we've been hearing this buzz for a while that tennis is something to really take a look at. This is one of those another success stories of a former player 
who is leading the program and, and Harry, man, Harry, you know, it was an assistant as well. And, you know, we already, we always, always talk about that story of like, you know, he took another job just so to come right back and then basically within months uh, to come lead the charge. But this is a true testament to uh, his, his leadership. He knows how to win um, and he's got the guys uh, really ready to play. You know, this, I think we're also in line and schedule to have some of them join the show um, to kind of highlight them. But um, this is, this is a great testament to the Spartan will of uh, bringing us back to that notoriety of a, a, a strong tennis men's tennis program. So looking forward to it. If you, if you ever got a chance to go out to the facility and, and support them, you know, please do if you're living locally, but um, this is great, man. We talk about all the other sports leveling up uh, in Spartan nation. All of our other sports are leveling up and winning. Um, and then now it's like basketball still consistently, but like football, it's our time football to be collectively as a department sports wide uh, is, is going to be a, a force to be reckoned Without with. question. Harry Jaden, is that the how you saw coach coach Jaden? Is that how they say his last name? Uh, in his second, Jadoon. 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 Okay, Jadoon. <laughs> Jadoon. And hey, we, might both be, we might both be wrong, but I, I just say Coach Harry. I just hey, Coach Harry, Harry, I know you I said that. Speak. I just want to make sure, man. I got to get this right. Yeah. Look, we're, we're, we're learning together. But tennis, this is a game that everybody can play. I know pickleball is sweeping the nation right now, and, and tennis is something Absolutely. that you can play well into your 80s, you know, like golf, you know, a little bit more cardio involved in tennis. But these guys are, are killing it. They're not playing any elders golf. This isn't for the novice. These are professional level tennis players um, that that we have at Michigan State. So, man, we are taking notice and we have to celebrate uh, and give credit where credit is definitely due. And it is due with the Michigan State men's tennis team. Um, Otis, tickets. Talking about gymnastics, man. Like this is they're on a tear. Tickets go on sale tomorrow, February 9th, for the Big Ten Championships in gymnastics. Get them now, man. Get them now. Guess where they're hosted. You know, (laughs) (laughs) ticket sales obviously being on sale tomorrow, Big Tens. It is a benefit for Michigan State to host postseason. This is any sport. Uh, It's one, it's revenue. Two, it's just being able to showcase your facilities uh, across all fan bases coming in to support their respective team. Uh, we can't forget is that also softball and baseball season tickets are are on sale as well. So we'll be able to drop that link for Spartan Nation and our followers to to click. Um, there's a lot of great themes that be going that will go on in the season for baseball softball. Um, mm-hmm. So feel free to support any and all of our Spartan. Uh, team so that we can be able to show that love and support Spartan Nation. Without question. You got to do that. Got to support all the sports as we all like to do here. This is Sparta MSU. Gymnastics does have a meet tomorrow versus Illinois. So there's a little theme. Illinois gymnastics tomorrow. Illinois basketball on Saturday in the Breslin Center. So make sure you go get your tickets and go watch our uh, our gymnastics team. They're going to be they're going to be at home here in the Jenison. Like what you guys have heard so far, do not forget to click the like and subscribe buttons on YouTube and follow us on all of our social media platforms at This Is Sparta MSU. And we're going to take a break here and listen to some messages from our supporters. The Rudy Tutti Extravaganza starting at $7. Create your own combo with eggs and bacon only at IHOP. Are you confused about whose interests your financial advisor really serves? Is your advisor making decisions that benefit you, or is he just chasing a fat commission for himself? Spartan fans, you deserve a commission-free advisor with no conflicts of interest, like Trivoloni Asset Management. Trivoloni Asset Management is a fully independent, fee-only registered investment advisor. The company is even owned by a Spartan, me, Antonio Trivoloni. Visit us at SpartansMoney.com. That's SpartansMoney.com. Make an appointment today. Go green! SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception, first down, just a nice solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. 
SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Love dropping those stacks and high-fiving for those tickets. Always love to see that. Without further ado, we need to bring on a man who's been working his butt off ever since taking a job here at Michigan State for the last two-plus months on the recruiting trail, building a staff, doing all the necessary things, and he's got a process behind that. J.U. and I ask him a lot of these questions and more in this interview that we have right here with head coach of Michigan State University football, Jonathan Smith, as he joins the show. Without further ado, we welcome Michigan State head football coach, Jonathan Smith, joins. This is Sparta MSU. Welcome to the show, Coach Smith. Uh, been a long time uh, since you've been in East Lansing, just a, a few, what, about 60 plus days. Uh, yeah. Just really excited to, to, to get you here to kind of get to see and let the fans know who you are, and, uh, you know, I'll just start right off and ask, you know, so how did you, you know, coming out of Pasadena, California, and you're going down to Oregon State to play your ball, how'd you get into coaching? Uh, you know, I played high school all the way back to even Little League when I started drawing hand, plays on my hand with the <laughs> with the guys in the neighborhood, and I've always just loved the schematics of, of football. Um mm. And then I, I also love just that I think it's the ultimate team game, right? You got so many guys on a team and, uh, you know, some play offense, some play defense, the special teams, the contributions from so many. Always like that. Had a, a experience playing college football, Oregon State, which was phenomenal. Because um, when I went to college, I thought I wanted to be a high school coach. Mm -hmm. uh, but after experience in college football, I knew I, I wanted to stay at that level. And that age group, the schematics that comes with college, and then dove into college coaching, made some different stops and all of that, and really enjoyed every stop I've made. I learned a lot. There's a lot of great people in this thing. And I like the idea, too, of working with 18 to 22-year-olds, give or take, just in that stage of their life, uh, kind of helping them with all kinds of things beyond just, just football. And I've really enjoyed that part. And now excited about this opportunity here to start a new with a new group of guys uh, in the locker room and and diving into them and heavy recruiting the first 60 days, but really looking forward to, to the day to day now, now that, you know, recruiting has kind of ended this period day to day, just being around these guys. Uh, we've had a team meeting this morning, uh, they've been lifting, working and, and getting to know those guys and moving forward towards spring ball. Yeah, that, that's uh that's awesome. And, uh, you know, coach, welcome to East Lansing. Um, you know, we talked to Coach Antonio and we talked about, you know, what does it take to build in a coaching staff? And one of his things was, I want a guy that I can sit in a car with for three and a half hours when we go recruited. For you, what does that take? Because you've put together um, a heck of a coaching staff right now that's, that seems like it's such a good fit to mesh well with um, the mentality that is East Lansing. What does that take for you for, to put together a coaching staff? Yep, uh, we put a lot of thought into it. Um... You know, started with some core guys that I've been with for a while, uh, knew that wanted them to come over here and they did a phenomenal job at previous places, but uh, speak the language, know kind of the expectations, schematics, those kind of things. So there's a core group that, that came over at the same time. You know, this opportunity, I felt like it was important to fill a staff with some guys that have ties to the area, been in the conference before, and we were able to land a few of those guys. And, you know, Joe Rossi and Chad Will, uh, both of them coordinated in this league. Um, know the recruiting paths we want to get on and those things. And then I think it's important to have some guys that, you know, been at the place, played at the place. And so we feel awesome that, you know, Coach Hawkins willing to be a part and stay on um, uh, with that piece. And then Dimitri Martin, who uh, you know, played here back in the day. I've actually known him for a long time and uh, competed against him. And he's done phenomenal work at a bunch of different spots. So kind of where it landed, I think we've got some elite coaches, some background in the area, but also some elite people. You talk about the guys that want to be, you know, the type of husbands, fathers uh, that I value. Um, so we're trying to create an environment where they could do both. Um, and they uh, they were excited about, I think, jumping on board on this thing and, and getting started. Well, Coach, you know, you, you have a, a diverse staff, absolutely. And it seems like a lot of great men that you just described there. You know, as you took on the job and you're looking at, you know, you hear presidential candidates talk about the first 100 days. You know, in football, maybe it's a 60, 90, 120-day plan that you may have. 
you know, what's the process for you behind coming to the Midwest and, and developing those relationships and what would be an unfamiliar territory, so to speak? I know you have a staff in place, but what is that process for you to get to know all the, the local coaches in that three hour radius that you talk about? Yeah, there was a lot when we first got over here, but the, you know, the first day we could get out recruiting on the road was in Detroit, uh, starting uh, right there with meeting high school coaches and meeting a lot of players. There's a lot of players around that area. I wasn't going to, you know, just because you know, everything was moving fast in December, right? You got the transfer portal open. You got your current roster to introduce yourself to. Try to sign a, a signing class in the middle of December. Wasn't going to allow that the timeline to dictate on the, the hiring of the 10 position coaches. And we were pretty thorough on that. So early on, you're juggling. You're juggling learning the current roster, getting on the road, want to recruit, need to interview a few coaches to, to add. And we were able to do all of that. The, the signing date, I felt really good about kind of the high school talent we were able to, to add. Some of those guys we had deep-rooted relationships with already. Uh, some of those guys were committed to the place already. Um, and then, yeah, we were able to find a nugget or two that was completely new Michigan State-wise. Um, a lot of work went into that. And, I, you know, I sit here and talk about, like, kind of what I – my approach. You got, you got to surround yourself with some really good people. And there was a lot of work done on the recruiting side, even the current roster helping us out on the recruiting and that um and then you know the transfer portal it closes whatever it was the first week of january so we were able to add some guys there positions of need um it felt really good kind of those first 30 days through december staff where we where we got it at uh diving into the current roster the guys were you know current roster exploring their options in the portal which uh, understood uh, but we were getting a, a good amount of those guys back added through high school we got I think it's nine high schoolers started school in January and they'll be here for spring ball. And so Phil, uh, the, there was a lot going on, but we targeted the current roster and the recruiting. And then the second piece was finalizing the staff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, definitely, I think you, all of those things that you talked about that process, you know, there was, it, it takes time. It takes patience going into that, but I think, you know, absolutely knocked it out the park and especially, uh, you know, from, being a former player and being in text group with former players and just seeing day in and day out, Michigan State, this person's committed, this person's committed. And, you know, the text that's going around to, in this former player's chat, like, hey, Coach Smith really getting it done. What do you attribute that, the success that you had in that short time with recruiting to? Uh, you know, you always look for the right fit. And so try to be authentic to, you know, the vision of what we're, we're trying to do here. I think there's a lot at Michigan State that sells itself. This thing's a national brand, uh, the history and tradition of this place, uh, the pride of the, the former players. That was another thing that wanted to be intentional, trying to get face to face with the former players. Uh, we had that Zoom call just introducing myself, yeah. that kind of thing. Former players help on the recruiting recruiting side, but also your current roster. Um, and so we just, just kind of dove in it that way, authentic. This is the vision, and we were able to land the recruits uh, off, of, off a lot of that. Coach, you know, we've had um, Aiden Childs on, on the show, and he and his family spoke very highly of you. What is your relationship with Aiden going back to uh, his high school days? Yeah, just really proud of proud of him. Um, does go all the way back to, to high school and, and recruiting him. That takes That's a process of, of recruiting, get to know Nikki, and Aiden, mm -hmm. Adrian, um, good people. I mean, just good people. And then Aiden, you know, arrived at Oregon State, spent a year there coaching them. Um, talented. Football means a lot to him, but he's really a good person. You know, school, mm -hmm. did well in school. Um, he's well-liked on that team and, and all of that. And so uh, feel fortunate that, you know, we built a, a close relationship and he felt like what was best for him uh, to, is to come over here. And we're excited to be, be working with him again. Um, yeah, so, Coach, I'm – for being a running back, a former running back, straight being a, a lineman, I'm excited that we have an offensive coach. You know, coach <laughs> it's been back. a while. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's been a while. You know, because we've had a lot of defensive minded coaches before. But you know, so offensively, you know, what can Spartan fans expect to see? You know, in Spartan Stadium, and you know, this season offensively. Yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, my background is on offense. We do got offensive coaches that run that show. Brian Lingren, been with him a long time on the offensive side. He'll head that up. Uh, we're looking for some balance offensively. We want to make the thing physical, but it's ultimately about scoring points. And so you got to have multiple ways to be able to do that. Running the ball, 
run the set up the pass, vice versa, pass to set up the run. Uh, and a lot of it does boil down to your quarterback. You want to put that guy in good situations, what he's comfortable with. And so, you know, building this thing off of the quarterback skill set is something we always try to do. I do recognize now being this head, head coach for six years, you know, there's three facets of this game. And so each year I feel like more and more being able to take a greater picture of, you know, what's best for the team to win. And sometimes that is playing a, an offense where you score a bunch of points or an offense where you're, you know, putting the defense in good situations and learning, you know, let's face it, November, weather games, all of that. It's not about just scoring points. It's about it's about winning games. Mm. So flexibility. I like to hear that, <laughs> which, which is great. And, and coach, I know today because this is recorded, this is going to come, come on uh, tomorrow night, actually, when people get a chance to see this interview. So the signing day is happening. This is National Signing Day as you sit. And you have, I think, 22 players uh, in this class. Uh, but, you know, not to go over every player. Uh, and there's a lot of them that we're going to cover in detail as we continue to go on. And I know you're going to give a presentation on that, I'm sure. Uh, but there is a big chunk of guys that are going to be preferred walk-ons. And, you know, the word on the street is that these guys are not just your everyday run-of-the-mill walk-ons. And their feedback with you has been through the roof. Does your playing days, because you were a walk-on at Oregon State prior to being the starting quarterback for Power 5 University, does that help resonate and be able to locate talent like this? I think the story helps because I did live the experience. Uh, and some of me, I see some real, real value um, of that portion of adding to your overall roster, right? We're going to do it in all, all ways, but – um, guys that choose to walk on at our place, they're equal opportunity. They're going to be treated just like everybody else. That's how I experienced it. I kind of tell the story when I was pseudo recruited out of high school, the head coach at the time, Mike Riley was his name, uh, promised me. He's like, Hey, you come up here and you can be treated just like everyone else. The only difference is going to be that you'll be, be paying for it. He lived up to that with opportunity and how it, I fit in and had an experience as a player. And so now I'm just trying to recreate that exact experience. Uh, for every walk-on, whether they're joining us this summer or they're on the roster currently, uh, you know, equal opportunity, and, and it is. There's a lot of good players in, in the state. We only got a certain amount of scholarships to be able to give out, um, but I do feel a serious uh, value with every guy that we were able to add to the roster. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. Um, so coming to East Lansing, you know, obviously it's it's different than the West Coast. They're definitely different than, um, you know, Corvallis. Um, but uh, what are some of the things that you had to, you know, adjust to and pick up with, like East Lansing log lingo, such as when someone says go green and go yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, you know, you just learn it all the time. Uh, I will say it's been great in regards to the reception, how welcoming people are. I want to learn a lot of the traditions. I had a four player in here yesterday talking about old school handshake that I got to learn. And so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. You got yeah. you on the Spartan dog handshake. <laughs> uh, which That's is awesome. Which is, uh, it's been fun. I'm embracing that. Uh, and I, I get yeah, being here two months, couldn't be more excited to kind of about the environment and the culture around this place, this state, and, and diving into it. All right. And, uh, you know, East Lansing, fun place. You've only been there a couple, and you, in that process, you had to recruit, you had to bring a staff. So I don't know how much you got to enjoy the outside of East Lansing there. So is there a favorite spot for food right now that you that you find in East Lansing? Uh, we've gotten around. Some of us, we take these guys to, you know, recruiting visits and Bodie's and Capital Prime and some really <laughs> nice space. Uh, Dagwoods, I've been to a couple of times. Oh, been, the burgers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that there, so there's a lot of options around here. And again, give me a little bit more time to explore. But those those few places I've been to a couple of times. I, I got to say, you you won a lot of people over when you were at Dagwoods because a lot. Like, there were people sending messages. Coach Smith's at Dagwood. He's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good spot, man. It's like it's crowded now. You get around and I learned that you go around a game night. The place oh, gets man. packed. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, and that that's awesome because you know when you're thinking about the the different places to go eat, that's that's George Blaha. You know, our longtime play by play announcer for football. That's his favorite spot after a game, post game stuff. But, coach, when you look at uh, like, like, there's coaches like Coach D'Antonio when he had downtime, he liked to do yard work. I know there's guys like Nick Saban 
I don't think there ever was downtown yeah. until yeah. just now, right? And then there's guys that say, you know, I want to go to the western side of Florida and look at that sunset over the bay. What does Jonathan Smith like to do outside of coaching? Yeah, um, well, it definitely starts with my family. I got three kids, you know, high school or eighth grader, fourth grader. And so spending mm. as much time with them, their events, those type of things. I, I enjoy reading when I do get some downtime. With this travel, that's allowed for to do some of that. Um, pretty simple, man. To be honest, I love the part of ball and working. And when it's downtime, it's kind of with the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, real quick, I think I say it right. What is it, Oregon or Oregon? Oregon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what type of music does Coach Smith listen to? That's interesting. We were just talking. I'm kind of across the board. I mean, I just had some Tracy Chapman playing, and then it turned into George Strait. Um, Chris Stapleton and I had BB King on last, you know, yesterday. I'm BB. I'm a mixed bag on that stuff. Okay, <laughs> the Lucille, huh? <laughs> well, uh, Coach, you know, like so. That I mean, I, I I think I know the answer to this, but in your mind, what sets you apart from a lot of other coaches? If I'm a recruit just wanting to look at Michigan State really hard, what what sets you and your staff apart? You know, we definitely try to be authentic uh, in regards to just being open, honest. This is the, the vision on how we want to do it, uh, being able to thoroughly explain why we think the recruit fits, uh, whether position, schematics, location, what they want to chase on the school education side, which I've been impressed with that. Walking in here, our current locker room, there's over 30 majors represented. Guys are chasing different majors, which I think is important because uh, you can accomplish both uh, being a big time player and chasing dreams of championships, but also the National Football League. At the same time, you can chase being top-notch in the classroom, making sure these guys are leaving with a degree. And so we, we emphasize those things in, uh, in the recruiting process. It's big on the relationship and the people. You can spend so much time playing this game, right? There's high demands of time of, and then school. You're going to be around people nonstop. And so the people we got in the building, I think, sells itself. Hmm. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Absolutely, Coach. Uh, you know, um, just a little, little tidbit. If they say go green. Go white. Yeah. <laughs> He's got that down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one last thing before I let you go. You've been to a couple basketball games. Yeah. How have you, you know, what, how, what have you taken with the Breslin Center experience, the Izone, and all oh, that? Awesome atmosphere. Awesome atmosphere. I've been to like four of them now. Um, I enjoy watching this team compete. I think this team competes and, and goes. Coach Izzo has been so welcoming as well, um, just trying to pick his brain on this place. Coach D'Antonio, the same way. I've been with him a couple of times. That's why I'm back to these people around here just welcoming and, and willing to help. But you take – Myself, family's been to basketball games, recruits going to basketball games, that atmosphere. And it's not just that one. I went over to hockey as well. That thing's big time. And oh, yeah. And seeing that take off. So I'm excited to continue to get around other sports. And what are you looking forward to for when it's time for football season in Spartan Stadium? Well, yeah. that yeah. We, I'm glad we got a little time until we get there. We got some more <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely looking for that, that home field advantage, this passionate fan base to be able to experience that kind of on the, the correct sideline. Because the first time I experienced it, I was at Boise State like 12 years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, and we got beat pretty good. Um, so I'm anxious to get on the other sideline and, and have this fan base and that, that stadium, the atmosphere help us help us win a bunch of games. Oh, I remember that game. That was the Le'Veon Bell leap game, right? Right yep, in the yep. field. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> well, Coach, man, we're really excited to have you here in East Lansing, and we'd love to have you back on the show before the season starts. I mean, don't be a stranger here at all. Uh, we'd love to have you back. I know you have a huge schedule, busy schedule going on right now with signing day happening and a lot of other uh, obligations, man. but we so appreciate your time, Coach, and for real, have a great – rest of this spring going into the spring season and good luck to you and go green yeah go white man i appreciate you having me uh having me on and uh look forward to yeah, doing this again yeah and if you ever need an in at ricks i got you coach <laughs> <laughs> land shark rigs everything choose your guy choose the guy <laughs> great guys coach really good conversation there with coach smith uh ju always bringing the energy it was great to hear him and his vision, you know, hearing how as a walk on how he looks at 
other walk-ons. They're not just guys that are there um, for fodder necessarily. These, these are guys that he's looking to develop. This is very similar to what we saw with Coach D'Antonio finding talent, finding diamonds in the rough. And I, I can see, I mean, this guy has a vision for the future. Talking about writing plays in his hands in the Little League. I mean, schematics, this is what's on his mind. He's a reader, a family man, and exactly what Michigan State needs uh, for its head football coach. And I'm happy, for one, to have him as the head football coach at Michigan State University. And I know you guys do, too. Um, special programming note. There will be no show next Tuesday in out of respect and memorial for those involved in the horrific tragedy that happened on campus one year ago. It's hard to believe that much time has gone by. But out of respect for those families and those lives lost, we will not have a show next Tuesday. Otis and JU had to run over to the 36th inning. What's that? That's the Father Vincent Welch Memorial Dinner. It's being held at the American Polish Center Cultural Center over in Troy, Michigan. Um, this is where one of our own, Mike McNamara, uh, runs this special event. It's benefiting students at the University of Detroit Mercy and Loyola High Schools. And Michigan State University head football coach Jonathan Smith is going to be honored with the Hank Aguirre Memorial Award. How about that? So we get a lot of Coach Smith. You know, he's getting his feet on the ground. He's getting his feet up under him. And as soon as he takes a breath, we want to honor him because we are excited about the upcoming season. 2024 is going to be fantastic and it's off to a great start so far. So for Otis Wiley, J.U. Culkrick, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Have a good night. God bless you and go green. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, Go green.